Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. And guess what? Madeline K came to the Fro Factory to hand deliver the stuff you see right here. Now, before I get too far into that, I do want to let you know that this is a production unit of a Z6 II. It is the first, I believe the first one that is here in the United States and it's in our hands and Madeline K said not to say that. Oh, phone call. Hello? Right, right. I won't let them, I won't say it. I won't say it, okay? All right. You're welcome. I lied to her. Not that it's a big deal that we have the first, it just so happens that we're closer to where they came in and that other reviewers will get them shipped out this week and they'll start doing their tests. Now, at the end of this video, we are going to do a quick side-by-side -side of the Z6 and the Z6 II where we will show you the overlays of probably me or someone else running down the street or walking fast while taking sample images and we're gonna go upstairs and look at those sample images side-by-side -side with the Z6 and Z6 II, but this is really just about unboxing and giving you some thoughts right now because we want to spend time with the camera before we give you our final take and a full-on review. It takes time. We may give you some shorter videos over the next couple of weeks just with some tests, but we need to take time with the cameras. We can't just rush the stuff out. But let's start with unboxing this right here. This is a kit. This is the 6.2, AKA the Z6.2 with a 24 to 70 F4 lens. I'm just gonna tell you what's in the box right meow. And the really, the only thing that you care about is a user's manual in Spanish. Manual del usonario. That's right, look how thin it is. It's like it went on a diet. Usually when you get these things, they're thicker than a pickle, a thick schmeckle. We don't need that. You don't need any of this. You don't need any of this. You don't care about that. We're not even gonna show you the lens because everybody wants to see the body. So b body's going there. This is going on the floor. Here it is. We know not much has changed between the Z6 and the Z6 II. This is it. You got it, Steven? Yeah. All right, good. The focus kept up. On the side of this, two card slots. The thing that we asked for to happen over two years ago, Nikon says, we listen to our consumers when they should have put it there in the first place, whatever, it's here now. That was one of my main reasons for not using this in a professional situation or the Z6 or the Z7 was the two card slots. Now, I can't complain about that. The other thing, dual processors. We will see if there's a difference between the dual processors of the Z6 II versus the single processor in the Z1 at this point the Z original. The body, everything's basically going to be the same. It's going to smell the same. Yep. Oh, no. No, it reminds me of anesthesia from when I had my surgery as a kid. That's like, that's going to send me into a stupor if I think about that again. Oh, that's scary. Anyway, what is the other important thing right here, Stephen? The battery grip. That's right. And it does more than just be a battery grip. This is the grip. And guess what? It doesn't feel terrible in the hands. And it has dials. And it has more dials. And it has a shutter release button. And it takes two batteries. Thank you, Nikon, for listening. Now, with two card slots and a battery grip that you can use to take pictures vertically, you are now competing in the professional realm. Yes, I know professionals have been using the system without two card slots and without a battery grip, but that isn't me, and that's one of the reasons I didn't use it. But I do want to show you how this is hot swappable, because I was trying to figure that out. Anyway, the door opens on the side. You can pop out the battery closest to you on the end. You just push down on this orange lever, it looks like right here, but in order to get the tray out, you press down right here and the tray comes out. You can put one battery in here, one battery in here, and then when one dies, you can just pop it out on the side while it's still powering the other one. All right, let's get to this lens because I know you guys want to get to that test. This is the 14 to 24 2.8, and it only took like 14 years to come out with a new version of this. I usually throw this box on the floor, but it's gonna come in handy because we need it. This, I always will throw on the floor because nobody's gonna use that bag. All right, and one of the other things, it's hard to get this lens out of the box. 
I don't want to break it. It's, it's not the first one. People already got these in the mail, but this is it right here. This is the 14 to 24 2.8 that finishes the Hebrew Trinity. You now have a 14 to 24, 24 to 70, and 70 to 200. Fantastic glass, some of the best glass out there. It is super duper fast, I love it. But look at this, this is your lens cap. It can only go on one specific way. You don't wanna lose this or you have to buy another one. But that's okay, because look at the front element here. It's not as bulbous as the old 14 to 24 that didn't even have a springy loaded cap that you could put on the front. Now, being that they were able to make the front element so much flatter, that means you could put on a screw on filter. Though it doesn't seem like it can go on like this, which it can't, and that's why I didn't throw this box on the floor earlier. Let's open it up, see what's in it, and throw the box. There are three things in this box. We have, let's see, this is a lens hood for when you don't wanna use a filter. It comes with that. This one right here is massive. This is a lens hood with a filter thread built in that's 112 millimeter filters. They're gonna run you a pretty penny, but at least you can do it now with this lens hood. And finally, wow, you have the lens hood with the filter on. They give you a massive lens cap. Hello, I'm a massive lens cap. I'm meant to go over the front. Look, they give you a lot of options. You didn't have that back with the 14 to 24, 2.8, 13, 14 years ago. This is light, this is compact. I wish it was a 12 to 24 like Sony has, but this is smaller and lighter than the 12 to 24 and doesn't go as wide at 14. But I am looking forward to using this because this is one of the lenses that's been missing for the last two years that didn't allow me to use this as the system that I would use in the real world. Now over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna put the Z6 II and some of this glass through its paces and then give you other videos. But right now we're gonna take the Z6 and the Z6 II outside to get our first little test out of the way, then head up to my desk upstairs and show you the results. Let me jump in here real quick to remind you that the super huge mega camera giveaway for 2020 is still going on, where I'm giving one of you the chance to win a camera or lenses valued up to $4,999.99, which means you can get the Z6 II and a bunch of other stuff. It is free to enter. Head on over to bit.ly slash megafro2020. And if you want to score extra entries, you can get presets to get extra entries, but you don't need to make a purchase in order to win the grand prize. Now, let's get back to the video. Hey, look, I'm upstairs. Now, we already went outside and we did some quick testing. Now, the only way to see if the Z6 and the Z6 II are any different is to put them side by side, mount them, same settings, same lens, same subject, same everything. Now, I'm not a big fan of these tests, but that is the only way we can look at the overlays and we can look at the images and say, is one better than the other? But this is an early preliminary test and what you're gonna see right now, a bunch of clips outside, you'll see the Z6, you'll see the Z6 II, and then we'll come back and discuss it.
So what do you think? That is a preliminary early test, side by side. I am going to take it out into the real world. I'm gonna try and shoot some football. I'm gonna try and shoot some soccer. I'm gonna try and do some action stuff because if the camera can pass with flying colors, shooting that type of thing, then shooting everyday other stuff, it should have no problem doing so. But did you notice how the overlays kind of look similar between the 6 and the 6.2? They seem super laggy behind. But even even though they're super laggy behind, when you look at the pictures up close, it seems like it's actually hitting more times than missing. But the big question is, is there really a major difference between the two and the original? Because there doesn't seem to be much of a difference right now between 3.12 and whatever firmware is in the Z6 II. Now again, this is preliminary early. We're gonna take it into the real world, but if we're saying, is there a big difference between the Z6 with firmware 1.0 and where it's at today? Yeah, absolutely. But is there a big difference between the Z6 and the Z6 II? That's the major question, and right now, I'm leaving that up to you to figure out, and I'm gonna continue to do real-world testing to get the final answers. One of the things that's interesting about the Z6 and the Z6 II, or the entire Z system, is subject tracking. The fact that I need to activate it and then select what subject I'm gonna track is really not the best way to do it. With the Canons, with the Sonys, you have subject tracking all the time and just having to go through this process of hitting an F1 and hitting an F2 or either one, then selecting the subject and then seeing if it actually tracks and, and follows is, is honestly antiquated, it's behind. Now what I will say between the two and the other one is that when you get closer with the subject tracking, you get closer to the camera, it actually does switch over to the face detect and the IAF where the six original does not do that. Let me turn over here and take a look at some of the images done with the 70 to 200 2.8 on the Z6 II. And it seems to do a pretty good job. Now, let me just say this, you can download all of the full res exported JPEGs over on the website. The link is down below or up on the screen right now. Those are just JPEGs exported from the RAW files. Yes, I can open RAW files with the, the Z2 right now, and you're gonna look at the JPEGs. I don't wanna put them side by side. You can put them side by side and determine for yourself right now whether you like one or the other, but we're gonna continue to do our tests and come up with more concrete answers and results in the real world. But this stuff looks to be good, it better be at 2.8. Um, that's why I wanted to throw the 70 to 200 on there, is because that is a pro S level lens. It's not the 1.8, it is a 2.8, and it seems to nail pretty well using the face detect, even though, like I said, the overlay is all over the place when you're moving, it still seems to hit. Now, the only time it seems to miss is when I have an abrupt stop, and there's an abrupt stop, and that's still in, but the next one is out as I start to go backwards, and it misses a couple, misses a couple, misses a couple, and then reacquires. So it seemed to do okay, which is a good thing. Now, we're not putting it against the Canon or the Sony right now. This part of this quick unboxing and then showing you these samples is for you to get an idea right off the bat with a basic test, side-by-side, -side, Z6, Z6 II, and you guys can start to figure out what you think right now, and we will continue to do our tests. But we just wanted to get this out there for you as quick as possible, but still give you guys something to go off of. That's why you have the side-by-side -side and some files to play with. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya. Let me jump in here real quick and say, would you like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations? Well, if you said yes, head on over to the website, look for this orange box, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free.